have an amended amendment to the uh, regular agenda um, that is not here. We're going to I'm going to ask for a motion to point district clerk to attempt to have to be Can I get a motion? Second. All favor. Aye. All right. And now I need a motion to accept the present agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Public comment? Brian? How's everything going in the topic? <laughs> All right, we, we lost the board member. Everything going good so far? All right. All right. All right. Board comment? Anybody have anything? Uh, does that mean to why? Does that make me a line for Colorado? I think so. I'm not positive down the, down the line, but uh, one of the things we have to discuss is for the board is uh, um, We've always uh, sent somebody to the NISBA conference under the yearly conference. But part of uh, what happens at that conference is we've always had a delegate um, represent that uh, in a vote. It's uh, if anybody's interested, it may be down in the agenda further. It's actually on the October 12th meeting where you're going to decide about resolutions and who the delegate. So I'll be reaching out and we'll, we'll discuss just further and it might be down in here. I just saw uh, you're supposed to talk about it a meeting before and then a couple meetings before. With that, it was a little bit set some time and go down for it. Um, all right, Mr. Notebook. Uh, Matt, hello, how are you? Hi. Any board comment? That's where we're at right now. No. Okay. Uh, superintendent's report. Sure, check. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to switch over uh, for those online to my PowerPoint. We have a couple agenda items under the superintendent's report tonight. Uh, at the first part, I'm just going to start off with just a little brief overview on the opening of school. Uh, Mike's going to do a few comments in terms of uh, a regular agenda item that we have. Uh, we need fiscal update to uh, let us know what the status of the uh, state budget and the effect on public schools will be. We're going to have an update on the capital project. We have some guests joining us remotely in terms of um, an alternate that we believe we can now um, facilitate. And then we have uh, um, John Brantley here tonight, our athletic director, just give you a brief overview of the uh, fall sports season and what we're doing with athletics this school year. So as you know, uh, we've been talking about this um, since early August, uh, the reopening of schools. Um, as you know from my report to the board on August 25th, uh, Chad came up with a, a custom opening week schedule. Many of you have seen this grid. We have now gone through the first week of the schedule, which was the first four days of school. If you recall, we moved all four of our superintendent's conference days. We front-ended them, and last week, the 8th through the 11th, we had a tremendous amount of professional development for our staff to better prepare them for remote learning um, this school year and hybrid learning as well. We are now in week two, uh, the week of uh, September 14th. These two weeks, the 14th and the 25th, um, the 14th through the 28th, I believe, I'm sorry, the 14th through the 25th, um, we are virtually all remote. 
uh, for the, with the exception of our kindergarten students who are coming in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week for screening, and they'll be starting full time on Thursday, with the exception of our special education students who are back on campus, um, effective this past Monday. And then next week on Monday, our preschool uh, students start. The following week on the 28th, beginning on that Monday, and it varies by day of week, we start bringing back uh, a grade level per building effectively. And we start transitioning our students back to those who transition those students who selected in person instruction, we start transitioning them back to campus. And then the following week, October 5th, really effectively begins the first week where everyone will be in the modality that they selected. So for instance, if a parent or parents um, selected full remote, that's their students would remain full remote. If there's uh, K-6, the students will be coming Monday through Friday, and then 7 through 12 on a hybrid schedule based on the last the, uh, the last your last name. So that was kind of just how we decided to start the school year off. Uh, in addition to that, and I'll be going a little bit more about the numbers, we have provided what we're calling learning support. So for these past for this week and next, where parents um, are home with their children or could not be home with their children, we've provided the opportunity to um, have child supervision. And we'll talk a bit more about that. And uh, We've reported to you in the past that we have a daily self-screening health check that's operational. Uh, it will be operational for all the students effective the um, 28th when they come back. I think we're testing it with those students who are on campus uh, this week. All staff are currently um, participating in the survey at approximately 2 a.m. in the morning. An email comes in and you have to answer the four questions that most of you are familiar with. And if you answer them all no, you're good to go, you submit it, and uh, no issue. If you don't, if you answer yes to a single question or don't answer the survey, that kind of sets a red flag for us and um, we take the appropriate action, which might mean to ask the staff member to stay at home or to perform the health check when they get on site, which we're doing with um, some employees. I can answer any questions at the end of the presentation. Just a couple, uh, I, I did some walks around, walk around um, last couple days. Today, uh, yesterday and today, as I mentioned, uh, we had kindergarten screenings going on. Um, this, the, the image on the right, I was just coming back to my office uh, from a visit to the high school this morning and the kindergarten students were being dismissed and I caught this little guy in the hallway and I said, did you have a, a good day today? And unprompted, he, he gave me a thumbs up. I said, oh, wait a minute, let me grab my phone, do that again. And so this little man was here today for his screening. And then the picture on the left, if you saw or follow our Facebook, um, you know, we're trying to keep as much normal this year as we can. Adam sent out a call for first day photos. So despite the fact that students weren't necessarily coming to campus yesterday, it didn't mean that it wasn't their first day of learning. So parents graciously sent in a number of uh, photos of their children on technically what their first day of school, first day of learning was. So that was great. Um, a couple other images from those photos of, of the first day of learning, a little different this year than, than most. We have a couple of our students who are at home um learning remotely and last but not least in one of my uh visits today i happened to pop in on sean caldwell and he was doing uh he was conducting a physics tour a physics lesson and i said boy what a what a what a difference um what physics class looks like this year than in most uh, i briefly spoke just a few moments ago about our learning support uh, just to give you some context we have about 45 students on average taking advantage of that each day that is that takes place in our library and in our cafeteria at MEB. I want a shout out to the teaching, teaching assistants and the uh, classroom aides who are um, providing that supervision. And you know, just to, to reiterate, these are students who whose parents needed a little help uh, for, for supervision. They um, either they dropped them off in the morning, and, and we made it so flexible that you could take advantage of whatever hours in a given day or whatever days in a given week that you need. Drop your students off, and we will take good care of them. We'll um, uh, support them in their online learning. We'll make sure they uh, get a nutritious lunch, and we'll give them some some recess and activities as well. That's going really well. Kristen took this photo, I think, today, and uh, she's very very pleased with the um, with the outcome. I've answered quite a few questions from parents the last couple of weeks. Just kind of a reminder: we started out very conservatively. Uh, we are a district who has um, supported mask use unilaterally. Uh, whether you're on the bus, whether you're in the building, whether you're in the class, 
um, even if you're socially distanced in the class, and then we're providing students with uh, mass breaks on a regular schedule. Uh, it's not uncommon for the first few days to hear Kristen come over the uh, public address system and say it's time for a small break. So um, we understand that some parents uh, may feel that that's a little too conservative, but again, we want to keep the students healthy, we want to keep them here, and we want to keep them learning. Um, and I know Andy's on, on the call too, but we, um, a couple months ago, Questar Trebosis did a uh, somewhat of a, a small uh, kind of a scientific uh, study uh, by if any of you have seen the product uh, advertised on TV called Microband, it's basically a product that when you spray it on, it helps promote, um, uh, the, it reduces the bacteria and, and virus, viruses that attach to the surface. Um, they did a, a controlled study with um, a local school district by uh, having buses that, were, that participated in the summer program uh, at a local district and they sprayed the buses down and they, they measured the level of um, uh, bacteria that grew on the buses that were treated versus the buses that were treated and uh, just to kind of uh, validate the manufacturer's claim that this would help um, in, in terms of keeping down the viral load on surfaces. Many of the districts locally have taken advantage of this program. The company comes in to be able to certify its use. The company comes in and uh, does an application. Uh, we were having several areas done in addition to our buses, which are done on a week, is it a weekly, a monthly or weekly basis? The application, yeah. No, every, uh, it lasts three months. It lasts three months, okay. Okay, it's less between 60 and 90 days. The company comes in and they, we've also had them do um, main entrances, bathrooms, nurses' offices, the isolation rooms as well. And we're hoping that all of these uh, strategies cumulatively help us attack um, or keep the virus um, viral load down. So that was just kind of a, something that you had not really heard about up to now. Uh, something that you would have been copying on today, we're really excited that the USDA has now extended the, um, what would have been like the community equivalent of the community eligibility plan, which means that all students, yes, I said all, are eligible for free breakfast and lunch until further notice. Now, we don't know how long that'll last. Uh, it's being done to assist families who are having some difficulty through uh, the months of the COVID crisis and uh, I'm sure at some point um, they will modify it, but right now um, our families are all eligible. I will tell you that I just got a text from Barb moments ago within um, a few minutes of sending this notice out on Facebook and through school messenger. She had six phone calls and a couple emails for parents who were interested in more information and to make sure they understood what um, how the program was running. So that's really great news. Let's see, uh, remote learning, just to update you on some numbers, just a couple more slides here. We, um, we're covering still around that 24, 25% district-wide. You can see by the slide here, hopefully you can see it. Um, we've, we have about 109 out of 385 students at MED that have selected full remote. And uh, the percentage is at the middle school 25%, 20, I'm sorry, the middle school 25%, high school 23%. And remember that this is, uh, a commitment that goes through the first trimester at uh, MED, which takes us to about December 3rd, and the first quarter at the middle school time school. Parents who want to remain in that modality do not have to do anything. Parents who may want to switch, they're either full remote and want to come in person or vice versa, will do so approximately two weeks before those um, deadlines. And um, this is just a breakdown, it's hard to see from where you are, but a breakdown by grade level. Um, it's, there's a couple, there's fourth grade is kind of high, but the rest of the grades are, are, are pretty, actually fourth grade and 11th grade are a little low, or, I'm sorry, 11th grade is low, fourth grade is high, but the rest are, the rest of the area is. So, I can, and then I just have to fix the zoom piece. So let me do this. Um, I can, that's okay. We can. It's, yeah, there we go. How's that? For those people at home, bear with me. There we go. A little better? Still an eye chart for those of you that are in the back of the room. So, Matt, if you can read that, you don't have to put your ear to the chest. <laughs> Okay, um, an update on, on homeschooled students. As you know, many parents have chosen 
um, this year to homeschool their students. Uh, I, I, I will say that I've talked to several, and many have said once this is over, they'll reevaluate it, but for now they feel comfortable in doing this. Some have entered into learning paths and all sorts of um, creative strategies. But I wanted to just kind of point out that when I last reported to you, we had uh, 52 families or a total of 86 students. As of today, uh, that's creeping up. We now have 56 families and 104 students. Um, and Brett Fortran, our assistant principal, who heads up that, um, that program is quite busy these days. Uh, and that's it. Uh, just, just a quick uh, shout out to the um, MEVPTO. If you saw the Facebook post on day one, um, I, I believe it's the PTO uh, and, and their volunteers who came the night before school started and did some nice um, inspirational uh, words on the front um, walkway of MD, and I, I know that was very well received. So at this point, that's my just kind of kickoff to give you an update of what's, go what's going on. Uh, of course, unlike other districts where students started in person last week or this week, um, we've had very few students on campus, and we stand by that decision, but we also know that when the 20 week rolls around, we're sure to have um, some challenges in terms of working through different logistical challenges uh, that we look through with other district members. Any questions in terms of the opening? So, yes, Matt. Yes, so um, Mike, help me out if I'm not going to get this totally correct. So, in the weeks that we're doing remote instruction, because we have very few students on campus, they just need to go to the cafeteria for the food, correct? I, I have it on that. You know, they, need, I, they, need to pick, they need to pick up. They need to pick up. Okay. But well, you don't have to ask them. It's free for everyone. So anyone that goes to lunch can have a free meal. There's no ask them. There's no. All meals are free. So when you're here, you go to the lunch and we get a pay. Then everyone's going to be free. I think it, right now I think they're saying till December, and then they're going to see. Three weeks after. Okay. Um, and then they'll see. They re they renewed this from the spring. We had it in spring, and then now this is the renewal. But no one's on campus this year, so. We delivered to anyone that wanted meals. Um, we had some of the um, other people on there. But right now, anyone that's in campus that would go to lunch is a free meal. So, from, from the perspective of the students, uh, they had to terminate in October, November. Um, the basic lunch program is actually in the end of the fall. So, it's a single lunch, and then we can put our breakfast day of lunch, and we can put both of them. Obviously, snacks, you have to. Yeah, I'm super uh, interested in um, my knowledge of how it's taught. I don't know if I'm going to 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 know if i on their on a hybrid, but only be here every other day. We do have we do have them reaching out to Barb and letting them know, letting us know on the day that they're not here that they would like arrangements to pick up uh, pick up the food uh, at any day. So we've got a little bit of coordination going on, but it's it's free to everyone. So there's no you know in terms of like shame or picking out everybody. It doesn't matter. You know, nobody agrees with this or you're taking advantage of the program. You just go through the line. It is what we serve on that day though. So. It doesn't include on the cart items or anything like that. It's the lunch that's on the menu for that day. Hey, um, how are the buildings the cafeteria? So right now, the way I believe we're going to do it when students return is that MEV will be delivered to the classroom. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a, a, not a challenge, but now we're going to have to. Previously, it would have been those who have ordered lunch or received free and reduced. Now it'll be going to have to figure out who's, who would like lunch, right? So that, you know, we do still want to manage waste. And then at, at, at the middle school and high school, I, I understand that with the, the people that we have in person, we can properly socially distance those who are eating at any given lunch period in those cafeterias. So I can verify this, but I'm pretty sure the last plan we had was that they're going to be eating in a cafeteria like they were the previous. So uh, you got an email this afternoon. 
building. And uh, one of the things it says, curbside pickup is available Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 12 15 p.m. from September 14th through October 2nd, 2020 at the high So, I mean, but we, we all have this. Leave it, send it out there. Yeah, in terms of consumption number, are we going to be able to um, track the data per um, building? Yes, BARM has to keep granular track of all this because when it's reported to um, the USDA, we'll have to have it by building, by, and perhaps it'll be aggregated by student by grade level. That's all that's all protected information, but we keep it on the back end. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, before we go, we go to our invited guests. Uh, just a quick update for Mr. Shetty. I don't know if your microphone's on. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I'm just want to do the quick quick financial update. Uh, last week I talked about a, you know, the possible 20% reduction in aid on state aid, and you know the, the big change was it was looking at like the uh, total state aid. So as of now, um, for the 1920s, last year's money, I was talking about we had a reduction in special education excess cost aid of 32,000, we held 20% back. Our general aid was held 671 dollars back. We received most of it, and we were best to know because that was positive. That was a lot of money. But our BOCES aid actually came in at a 20% reduction, so $62,000. So for 2021, we have $95,000 held back so far. And if this trend continues, our total state aid of $7.8 this year would be another $1.56 million. So Chad, like all districts, are looking at you know, major, major um, shortfalls and other. Um, and one positive side, we rely more on taxes and state aid. You know, thirty percent roughly of state, so we're, we're getting hit. But the districts that are the other way, they get seven percent state aid. That's why you just read about Mississippi and Albany. They're getting massive funds. They rely so much heavily, heavily on state aid. For example, I'm talking about one point six million. A four district with the other end of the five million dollar deficit. So I still have hope. I still believe that there's going to be some federal money. But otherwise, a lot of these schools aren't going to be able to make it um, very long. We can get through a year or two with this. Um, I did send out an all staff email, not essential spending to stop. We're going through every purchase now. Health and safety obviously are done, and then anything price and safety until we get to the They're hoping, Quest Card creates it on a weekly meeting, a stadium plan. We're hoping um, end of September, the Division of Budget is going to get more guidance. Are these cuts going to be temporary or permanent? Or what's going to be, you know, what, what are the formulas that are going to put formulas in place? And we're still assuming the 20% could change. They could look at the four districts and say they can't get, you know, that'd be way too much money. They might shift the formula. So I'm hoping at the end of September we get some more guys. The cuts do become permanent, then we're going to do more of a, obviously, a, you know, really a spending freeze. Only pretty much health safety. We probably won't approve anything else. Um, we're looking, like I said, at a major amount of deficit. So it really depends on federal money coming to New York State or if they change some of the priorities and help the schools out. So, Hopefully, end of September, we'll get a better update. I'll be monitoring this. I'll be updating this probably every meeting or every other meeting with the board. Um, this will be a big discussion this year. As I stated last year, we froze a lot of spending from March on, all those four months. So we did bank money. So we'll go through that in the audit for, uh, for this year because of that. We put money away to handle this. So we handle one time a year. Obviously, the budget's going to be difficult. Um, that's where we stand with that. Another quick update on FEMA. FEMA was providing, uh, you know, there's household reimbursement. I've been tracking all the COVID expenses really for the PPE, masks, uh, clean products, those are the items that we can put in and get uh, uh, reimbursement for. We spent roughly $80,000. Uh, so the money I made last meeting is on. I requested a, there's a budget transfer for another $70,000. Uh, we're moving it from uh, a couple of codes that we have uh, some contingent money. It sounds like things going to stop. So today is the last day that we're going to probably reimburse money from, from March or January to now. And I think they're going to get out of reimbursing. It sounds like they're going to stop reimbursing anything after this date. They said they don't have the money. They had some of those disasters, some storms down south, and, and they said they can't continue to fund this. 
it is millions and millions of dollars. I knew that this was going to go on forever. Um, when everyone's applying for this, that's in your state. So I've kept track of all the expenses. Um, and then we put our orders in uh, just as free today. And they're actually even watching. If you put in a huge order today, they're going to deny them all. Um, we're not going to allow people to come back to the order. We're pretty good on that. I did move money. Um, we'll see where we go with the rest of the year. If we do spend that, you know, we spent seven dollars here. If we do spend over one hundred thirty thousand, consider a bigger project or more um, detail that's provided in the first few months. I'm sitting, you know, thinking where we be in that range. Um, we'll see where we go. But I'm going to continue to track after that day. Obviously, if we can get any money possible, you know, typically we reimburse eighty percent of all of the costs. Uh, but they're looking at all those costs. Some people are trying to put in. Learning options, phones, you know, they're really being, it's really the mass, the PPP in the distance center. That's what they're really doing. Nothing else. Um, so we'll see where that goes. So those are the two updates I have on the front end. So you guys have that. Any other any questions come up on the financial page at all? Matt? Yes, that's correct. We always think we always keep contingent money in the health insurance fund. I have some money. And if we have to, we're going to start using. Eventually, we're going to start using some of our un un uh, unassigned fund bills um, that we carry over. So we're going to start using those if we have. It'll be an interesting year with you know, suggesting considering that reduction. If I need to, I'll be using some of the reserves. But right now, we can we can offset it. Mike, would you like to introduce our next? Yeah, so we're, we're finishing up our capital project. Um, we're on track, just a couple of small items to finish up. I have, uh, I can't see him here. Uh, Dave Valerie is going to be speaking. I have Matt Schools, I think, and Matt Monahan from SEI and Dave Valerie from Colliers. So we did a little write up because uh, we had uh, enough money in the budget. We came in under budget that we can do that storage uh, shed proposal. Um, if, if they go in and change orders, those are on the agenda tonight. But I wanted Dave Bell to kind of go through um, to discuss kind of their process with all these. So, Dave, you can, can you hear me, Dave? Yes, I can. You're a little garbled, but I think I got the gist of it. Okay. Um, yeah, last, when we last spoke, uh, we had talked about there was a real desire to do the, the storage building. Um, which was built, uh, bid originally as an alternate, alternate eight, you know, a couple of years ago now. Um, and uh, it was just too close at the time uh, with the way the bids came in and with, uh, with the budget and what we were forecasting. We were a little uncomfortable at the time in, uh, in, in um, accepting the bid. And, uh, but now that we've gone pretty much through the project, as, my, as uh, Mike said, we're just finishing up some details, but we've, we're to a point now where we're comfortable in making that decision. And we had mentioned that at, at our, the last meeting that we were at, that uh, we were going to be making a recommendation and we have made a recommendation to the district that we do have the budget, uh, it's good news, we have the budget to, uh, to move forward on the storage building. And uh, also just as important, um, we have the time. Um, we're anticipating a construction completion in uh, in the end of November, early December. Um, I know we have to, to have everything uh, completed and in place uh, for Mike so he can submit it to the state um, in, uh, in in December. But it's good news. So I, I think I, I think I'm okay to say this. We have three change orders that are being considered uh, by you folks tonight um, to execute the storage building. Uh, one is for the general trades work, and uh, uh, one is for the, uh, uh, the, site, the site work, and one is for the electrical work. Um, there's really, there's no plumbing or no HVAC in the building, so really it's, it's, a, it's basically an outdoor storage shed, a large outdoor storage shed. So really, the the only trades are really uh, general trade site and electrical because there is an electrical uh, a feed out there for lighting and some convenience outlets. Um, we do need to move on it quickly if we're going to move forward. Uh, we need to start the process of um, getting what we call submittals in and getting them reviewed and approved. Uh, there are uh, a few long lead lead time items that we need to get in the hopper quickly. 
And so I think if we make a decision soon, uh, hopefully tonight, we'll be able to, uh, you know, to, to get this in for you this fall. Mike, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I need to expand on anything more or if, or if that's a good overview. I think that's a good one. It's helping up the question. Do we have any questions in terms of that? Uh, I know we're waiting a lot to see the but uh, any news about the building aid? Risk of the building aid, you know, the state cutting back on many of the risks we discussed uh, these days. Is any, any so, so this year's aid for building aid, we might have a possible 20% um, that project going, you know, that project obviously is being made out in the future. So I don't know if this would be dangerous to hold back on some of the rules. Uh, but, you know, our, our aid ratios are in the RG. Project already been considered. So we, those are set. Those can't change. So, you know, obviously any of these, any of these projects, this is a small piece of the 9.7 million. This is $300. This isn't going to be, I'm building it. This isn't going to, you know, it doesn't have it too much over 20 years. What, what happens to, uh, so if they're unspent, we have to apply those to pay down the debt over time. So we have to pay back anything. So in this example, we're not spending every dollar. We're not cutting it to the exact dollar. We will have some months, not a lot, but if we do the first vote, some months spend money that over time they'll pay that down for a time. That all works for debt Yeah. Um, at the one time. No, you can pay that over. You, you typically you pay it over PC. You don't want a one time cut your budget. You can spread it over. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? We would like to be working on that project. Yes, <laughs> you hear that? Let's get this building up. <laughs> There's no large screen TV for Andy's office room. Right? Um, I just want to thank you. We said this last time, but I'm um, extraordinarily pleased with the efforts and the professionalism of everyone involved. So, from that school, that Monaghan, Will Kelton, and um, Dave Valerie, and I know they are recuperating the police council on my thanks to them as well. Dylan, we really appreciate what you've done for the district. So, thank you. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Great people to work with. And if you know the questions, we'll get you back here in the evening. Thank you. Okay. And then we're going to move to my last item. Right here. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we're going to invite JD up. Uh, as a director, just, we've been doing a lot. I've shared some updates with you. Uh, the governor is now giving a green light uh, for some sports to start in the fall. He's going to give you an update in terms of the time frame and the sports that can actually start. And some of the things that are still in the hopper that we can um, decide in the next few days. All right. So, Yeah, I know you. I know you thought about it. Okay. So thinking of these hours and saying, "What are the implications of the whole thing about the school and how to build it in the place?"
categories for the high risk. We check all the cross sports and then we have football, soccer, volleyball, cross country ball, tennis, tier. So they break those those four down into high risk, high risk, low risk. So you take the high risk sports, which is including football, volleyball. I'm assuming that they put higher in volleyball than they do in the boys. And cheer, because obviously cheer is something, something that we love. They put soccer, cross country, tennis, and golf as the model of the boys. Last Friday, the state came out with specific of 49 page document. Uh, specific to athletics about recommendations for those folks that are in control. Along with that document, the state decided to push volleyball, push volleyball here to football to March 1st in the spring. So, the spring. so the great thing about the spring season is to push the spring season back and allow them. March 1st to end of April, those three sports opportunities for those kids. Then moving forward, we'll go to monitor the sports this fall. So we were kind of in the about that scenario until a fish came out. At first, it came out with different sections to decide if you want to go more after that. But right now, the guidelines are close, there's no name of guidelines, but they're about to practice. It's a limited practice situation for physical contact. But there was no set time for kids to know that we didn't know, sticking in the middle, or not even committed. So we're kind of like, okay, kids are going to come to practice. They don't know where they're going to go to until the shit makes that decision for them. So we're kind of here on the middle, we want to do this, what do we want it to look like? So what does that look like for us as far as talent? We have as a soccer, golf, tennis, and cross country, which are going to up on Monday. Sign ups are open. Numbers look okay right now as far as you know, we start looking at uh, I'll go to the most of the situation with the new team because we're going to be okay. Um, meeting with coaches tomorrow after school, the coach meeting about our, our expertise and balance, what kind of administration, what it's going to look like. I believe I'll be met in our next time after two or three days of meeting me. I'll try to come up with collectively procedures for teams that play, what it's going to look like because here, time is very similar. The NAC will be finalized Thursday for our meeting for the communities. So, again, it's, it's a little different uh, as far as uh, not being sufficient to talk out there and make sure you know all the interviews or the spectators, things like that. But it can be good. The season schedule is the typical game of the season. Stopping to play 16 games plus whole season. The game may not reduce to seven games. So the focus turn is not trying to win state championship, it is a bad turn to let's give these kids an opportunity to play, especially in the new season where this is a big opportunity to get back track that spring. You know, before the whole season was shut, obviously, when we shut down, all those kids lost their season. But we can have seniors who can be able to take one track to do tennis, to do the baseball, the softball, and the seniors. So, some kids are not going to be able to walk out of the field. So, the time that our kids can be used, they can take advantage of what our opportunity is. Um, other than that, in the modified scenario, we're talking tomorrow to kind of get it together because, you know, so, either right now, 
be a role model class in two leagues for our own running podcast sports. The rest of the other leagues in the section is saying not to. So we're going to find out how we're going to run them. If we don't run them, there's a good chance they can put that that hard first. Get a line that fight that hard first. So we're going to put that hard first. So we're going to put that hard first. We'll see if we can get that hard first. The um, other than that, that's about where we are at this meeting up to date. But we'll see what uh, else I've already done. I'm very confident that we can continue chasing. Um, one thing here, I talked about it today, um, it may talk about what we can do to help. Make this type of safer outside or around here. The Saturday we have a table in front of the game to sign in for practical purposes. It's something that doesn't come around to come out. Um, we're living in the spectator for family. So obviously, the spectator is a black man. We try to see how to social distance. We have to get there mark six feet out along the soccer field. That's we have an area where it's easy to identify at six feet. The bleaching is in the pool. So we can't monitor it. We have to use the features for the bench areas and the kids to in. So everything's still up and not sitting on top of each other. So the thing that we're going to do to solidify that, I believe that we're going to make this a good opportunity to do. So this is going to start to put the fifth page. Last one, end of October 28, 29. I think cross country road will be up in the first week of November. The season's going. So that's where we are. Any questions? So, so March 1st, which is two weeks prior to the March, originally March 15th, which is the spring season. So now we have the podcast spring season from March 1st to the uh, end, of, end of April. Right now, this team has put up football, throw top of all, yeah, and shoot. So there could be one, uh, one week overlap between the spring season start. April 19th, the state has been that said that you can start spring season with the official schedule baseball, track, softball, boys tennis. That will start then. They will probably will go into June. Here we can be done a week or two before Memorial Day. I think they can put into June now. And I think they're also waiting on more information about regions in this area. If they have to run regions, not on regions, if they can run on them, they can obviously run them together on them. They can run them together on them. They can run them together on them. They can finish the season before that. So there won't be a single season for baseball in this area. That is something that I'm not sure what the going to look like for this summer kind of March. So we got that's being discussed right now. Are we going to do three games? We're going to try to keep the same schedule for Friday, Friday, and Friday, morning, or whatever it may be. Who's that word on something? Or if it's just this school year, we may decide who are we doing with this. Now we'll put those sections. But when there's sectional opportunities from next fall, we will be able to pick up after some sort of normalcy. Yes, you will be a class in school. There's now a couple more from class in school that they change the right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We regularly do like one big girls program now that's going to do that number. Right now, we play around on it. It's dumb because it is, we used to play a single beat, the girls would play away. Now it's going to be up where they're going to play their soccer games. So there's not going to be less opportunity to work with less of a bus. Um, so there's not going to be over, overlap in that sense. The people that got to see the Tuesday and Friday, they don't play March and Wednesday and Saturday morning or the day to the next time. It's just be something that you have to be able to grow volleyball. That got moved tomorrow. So we don't, our numbers might not 
All right, we're going to move right along to uh, work committee report. Uh, Chief Black is the only committee on the of meeting, and uh, I've heard that everybody was in attendance and first um, Either that's uh, every year or to do a report on that. That's yeah, okay. Um, really, it was just a pretty straightforward meeting. Uh, the only question was whether or not we wanted to put a meeting on Zoom so that people could go to committees and what uh, opportunities there are to do things virtually through the library. And then it kind of still up in the air. And Julian's got a lot of things going on. While, you know, the library is shut down, there's places where people can get books. But they're doing a lot of Zoom meetings with the two groups that have been in the library. It would be interesting how she was able to keep things going. The Our 15th 
2017. Due to job with the Board of Education approved a memorandum agreement dated August 31st, 2020, with the Staff Central School Teachers Association. Can I get a motion? Motion. Can I get a second? Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, okay. R16, be resolved that the Board of Education adopt the limited curriculum to love. We get a motion. Motion. Okay. Yes, second. Any questions or comments? I just want to, um, you know, a couple of things you can see is really um, refine the process over the last couple of years. Very closely in the with our different principles. And I think um, the result of this um, coming through in the last two years has been uh, much improved over the, over the past. And I think we've got many things that we've discussed. And we'll be here to see our next two years and some of the things that we've done. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Everybody opposed? I saw you. I just want to make sure that that's usually a word. I didn't want to go too fast. Don't worry, I'm not going to take over the job. In fact, I have to do this with my recommendation for a number of dollars. R17, give me love for the best case to prove. CCSD Gold 2021. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Who you had? Being that we had a first season last year, first, at least the first quarter this year, uh, it's gold pretty much the same as last year. But I had some people follow on that. When did the uh, work on the goal to the black community decide that it could be sold? Yes, yes. So, everybody in favor? Aye. Everybody closed? I, I just kind of um, hopefully, you know, in the next year, we can get back on that. Then we'll be an opportunity to kind of get a social point to keep that position in the back of the summer and maybe get a job on. Our meeting is being resolved with the Board of Education to accept the consensus agenda IPK as written. Can I get a motion? A motion. A second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. I think for future agenda. Yeah. Matt. Uh, we have uh, 90 days, and I wanted to get through the uh, acceptance of resignation first. I thought it would be a little premature to have something on here, so we'll have, uh, you know, I guess one of our discussion items would be do we go out to vote or is there the board of points? That's our two options we have. Typically, in the past, the board has chosen a few interviews and so on. Uh, I guess we could probably take the opportunity right now. And so, we do have to do this. Um, this is a good thing. Well, I mean, whatever we have to do, we can take that out and do this and so We'd like to have a discussion. So, we'll wait till that gets through. 
Any other uh, questions or future items? Concerns? Um, I do anticipate uh, that we will be entering into executive session, so I'm going to need a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Then we're going to uh, reappoint our secretary uh, slash superintendent. I guess I'm not right now. As a uh, district school to that meeting also. Can I get a motion? Motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I do not anticipate returning to open session. But this is the, uh, all the audience at this point. So we, we have a couple options. Um, I reserve the um, library so we can move down there. Um, or if I want to go here, I can um, get many connected. Uh, complete this conference and get that connected. And then I'll switch over to my computer audio so that we can hear. Sounds good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, this is. So I'm going to end this and people who've done this this evening.